Let's go. Inside here, we've got the AdMotor M81 cargo bike. Let's get this sucker open and see what's inside. Well, that wasn't important. Yes, I'm aware I just spun around. Ta-da! That's a lot of zip ties. Woo! That's a big fat tire. Found the battery. So immediately one thing is for certain, they definitely needed to use about 4,000 more zip ties than they did because that was just, it wasn't enough. Hey, it's got keys. I don't know anything about e-bikes, but it's got keys. Okay, and in this box we got the pedals, some tools, manual, and what looks like to be a charger. All right, so I guess I'll put the pedals on, the front wheel fender, handlebars, there's the battery, and I'm assuming we're gonna need to get this charged. Let's do it. And there we have it, the M81 e-bike from AdMotor. Now seeing as this is the cargo e-bike, notice the large bed on the back here, I was thinking we could put that cargo feature to the test. Now the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna take it on a long adventure to my local Home Depot several kilometers away, and we're gonna load it up with all the two by fours we need to make this bike rack. Let's go ahead and go for a bike ride. Here we go. Well, there you go, a few trips later from the Home Depot and this sweet AdMotor M81 e-bike, which is now my new favorite toy of all time, has brought me this nice stack of 2x4s. Now, if you guys want to go ahead and build one of these bike racks yourself, you can go to my website, diybuilds.ca, and get yourself a cut list. That being said, I'm now going to follow this cut list, and we're going to start off by ripping three of these 2x4x8s directly in half at the table saw. So now that we've got our two by twos, you know, two by four ripped in half, it's slightly bigger than a two by two, but two by twos cost more than a two by four nowadays. We'll figure that. Anyways, whatever, we're moving on. We've got our two by twos, our two by fours. Now, according to my cut sheet here, we're gonna cut everything to length at the miter saw. And then we'll go ahead and put all the bird's mouth and finicky little details and all those cut pieces after everything is cut to length. So now it's on to cutting the diagonal two by two pieces. And for that, I have a stop block set up here, which is just my deep reach C clamp set in the correct position. So every time I make a cut, I just push it against the end. I don't have to think about it. Every piece will come out exactly the same. Okay, so over here at the table saw, you see I have my blade set up for inch and a half and an inch and a half spacing. That's to make room for our two by two, which is gonna connect the front of all these dividers. These are the dividers that separate the wheels, give us all of our spacing and lock the front together. So one thing I have done is gone through all these boards and I've orientated them in such a way that when I drop them here, we're gonna cut away this section. So on every board, I've looked for defects, knots, what have you, and I've put them in this lower corner as we're now going to cut that away. Okay, at the table saw we made our first cut, and because it's not as safe to do it again at the table saw, and we will have like a rounded corner, which I don't really want, 
We're over here at the bandsaw where I have a little temporary fence set up. If you have a real fence on your bandsaw, that's great. But yeah, we're just gonna slide these in, buzz these off one after another, and that'll take care of our corner. The last thing to do to these bottom pieces is to cut off this corner on a 45. So once again, I've got my stop block set up to just batch this out real fast. So for the three upright pieces and the three horizontal pieces, I'm going to be using half lap joints, which basically just means carving away half of the material on one piece and the other piece that goes on top of it, the opposite is true. So we're going to have one here, here, and at the opposite end. So all I have is a scrap piece of two by four and my speed square here. So I'll just line this up with the edge and we'll just give a mark. So now we know that all this material needs to be taken away up to the halfway point. So I'll get all this marked out and then we'll go over to the miter saw and make our first cut. So we're over here at the miter saw and there's two things to take note of. We have this auxiliary fence here, which is just a scrap piece of two by four, which moves our center point of the blade forward. So normally the blade would come down right here and we would be left with a radius on the back of the piece. Now, with this being pushed forward, we can create a flat spot along the entire kerf where we're going to cut right here. The other thing to take note of is the depth stop I have set back here. So our blade can only come down to halfway through. And that's all we want because we are, after all, making half lap joints. So I'll line this up. I'll make my first cut right here. And then we'll take away the rest of the material using the bandsaw because otherwise you're going to have to make a thousand little score cuts and then possibly clean it up with a chisel or block plane. And I just don't see the point. And with all the pieces cut out, it's now on to assembly. We're gonna start by building the back piece. As you see, I have my two horizontal pieces. The third one, we don't really have room for on this table. We'll do that after. And my three vertical pieces. All the half lap joints are lined up and I've got my square here to make sure as we put this thing together, everything stays nice and square. Now I am going to be putting this together with screws in the corner, as well as some construction adhesive. I'm not using just simple wood glue as these joints are a bit rough from the bandsaw and I didn't feel like making them super nice and tight. So we'll just fill in any gaps with a construction adhesive. And since it is an outdoor project anyways, the construction adhesive is a better choice. So before we go any further attaching things to the back piece we just made up, I want to pre-make these little subsections here. Now these just include the 45 degree angle piece and the bottom piece. Now I want to attach them with a three and a half inch construction screw going through this way as that's going to give us our most amount of bite. Now what I have set up here is a little jig just to keep everything super simple and we could just batch these out without having to think too hard. I have a positive stop over here. This is our right angle. Again, positive stop over here. So I should just be able to take this piece, put it into the corner there, and it lines up perfectly. We'll take our drill, drill out that hole, finish drilling out the hole, add some construction adhesive, put our screw in, bam, onto the next one. All right, now that all of our triangular pieces are made up, I have the back piece here and it's face down right now. And on the back here, I have marked out the location for all of these two by four pieces to go through here. 
The way I'm gonna attach them is just driving in three inch construction screws into the two by four through this bottom plate. I'm not gonna use construction adhesive or anything, it's just gonna be too finicky and this will be a very strong joint. So let's go ahead, stand this up and start attaching all these triangles. So at this point, it should not fall down on us. So I've got the unit on its back. I'm gonna go ahead and put some PL Premium all over this joint, and then we'll lay in our front two by two piece, which I have marked so I have everything spaced correctly, and we'll drive in the screws. So before we go ahead and lock everything in place by attaching these 45 degree supports, I have noticed that we have a pretty severe bow or twist or something happening here and we're nowhere near 90 degrees. That being said, I have my ratchet strap on the top and bottom and we're gonna crank it until it goes into square and then we'll drive in all our screws. And just like that, we have ourselves a bike stand. Now you might be wondering to yourself why we have these bigger gaps in between. Well, for one, the AdMotor M81 e-bike has really fat tires, so it's gonna need that spot. As well, we can use these spaces for the kids' scooters and other random crap. So it's kind of future-proof in that way. And the last thing I wanna do is add a couple hooks up here for the kids' helmets to hang up, and I'll give this sucker a coat of paint, and this project's done. Mm -hmm.